Hi, my name is Ayomi Hoken. I'm a fibers, fashion, and photography artist. I'm from Orlando, Florida, and I currently go to school at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. I used to draw in my dad's sketchbooks all the time, really getting into trouble that way. Um, and when I was about seven, I found a little sewing, like a sewing needle and some thread, and I just started using it. Uh, I re uh, soon after that, I got a sewing machine, and after that, I just started sewing everything I could. First thing I made was a really cute purse. Um, that's the first proper thing I made. But even before that, I was learning how to knit, crochet, um, needlepoint. I was doing jewelry making with my great aunt. Uh, I was really lucky to go to an elementary school that had a teacher that would stay after school and show us how to needlepoint. So that was really amazing and definitely really impacted. Um, my creative journey, I think. And now I'm a student at SAIC, which is the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And um, I'm in the fashion program, which is something that you do have to apply for. But I also study textiles and photography with it. And what I'm working on right now is my color theory uh, series, which is really looking at color and its different meanings in relation to other subjects. The first installation of that project was more so focusing on the moods that certain colors um, ex exuded. So I focused on the primary colors first, and now I'm focusing on the secondary colors, but instead of looking at the mood, I'm relating it to Afrofuturism and Black people as a whole, and really playing with the idea of how in America we're really viewed as secondary people and it just so happens that I personally think the secondary colors really remind me of Black culture. So I think it would be an amazing pairing to make a collection out of. So this is one of the coats from my Moves of the Primaries collection. I did a lot of textile manipulations for this. I bought the wool as like this, um, like pilly material, but I spent a lot of time um, felting on these little balls to it to kind of add to that mood that I was going for of kind of all surrounding like a cloudy mood, a little sad, um, kind of like overtaking and overveloping. I really, really love this coat because a lot of hours went into it. The yellow dress, which is another one of my favorites because it's so light and fluffy. And it's made out of a really light material. It's a chiffon, silk chiffon, and has a lot of movement. I was really um, attracted to how yellow feels, and I feel like making something with so much movement, when someone wears it, you kind of look like you're like walking sunshine. So that's why I love this one. Where I work, basically in this room, um, I'm sitting right in front of my sewing machine, my other sewing machines, my home one, and I have a little gold tracker right there. This is where I keep my threads so I can stay organized. And yeah, that's really about it. It's a pretty small space. A lot of what I do uh, involves pattern making because I believe if you don't get your pattern right, your, final, your finished project won't really look how you think it will. So patterns are extremely important. I am pretty organizational when it comes to my patterns, just because, like I said, they're so um, vital to the success of the garment. This is a pattern for a poison that I'm working on. Um, just something simple so I can test my skills. And this was just a little dress that I was draping, trying to see different silhouettes. Pretty simple. When I first got an idea, um, normally it comes from either a feeling I'm having or if I'm personally going through something or if I've researched something that I found extremely intriguing. So with the primary colors collection, that was actually a moment where I was feeling extremely uninspired. Um, and I felt like the things I was making weren't fulfilling me at all. They felt like I was um, trying to appeal to an audience and trying to sell my clothes and like the question I would always ask myself was is this sellable? I was just kind of getting tired of that 
rhetoric and that mindset. The school I go to, we are quite out of the box when you look at the things that we make. And that's the exact reason I went there. What's the first thing that you learn when you're trying to study art? You learn about colors. So I wanted to start with the primary colors. And I said, this could definitely be a series because there are one, so many colors. And going through different things and really linking them to other topics that mean a lot to me would probably be very interesting, not only to others, but most importantly to myself, which was what I was really focusing on. So I just started looking up what colors mean um, to different people, whether that's culturally or personally or scientifically. So even though colors have so many different meanings to different cultures, like in China, it means good luck and good fortune. But in other um, countries, it's a sign of bad luck and it's a sign of death or it's a sign of love in other cultures. And I wanted to really focus on the seductive part of it. So I wanted to really focus the red look on that. Yellow is my favorite color. So I really wanted to make it something that I just found enjoyable. I like yellow reminds me of the sun and just feeling warm and light. So while again, someone else had a different view on the color yellow, I chose to um, interpret it how I wanted. And then for blue, um, blue has always been an interesting color to me. So I really wanted to create a silhouette that was kind of overtaking the body, uh, not in a way where you couldn't see the body and not in a way where you couldn't recognize what the garment was. I definitely wanted it to be a coat because coats are so cozy. And I just also personally love jackets. So I decided to turn blue look into a coat and just a simple skirt look. No top. Just Sometimes you don't need one. Uh, so I put it on a model who, while she is very femme looking, um, she is like a very ambiguous person. Like when you meet her and when you just converse, she still gives off the femme energy, but um, she, she has that, that flow. Um, and I really thought that that look would be amazing for her. And that's the other thing I think of is who I'm putting the clothes on because that is an extremely important detail. For example, for the secondary colors collection, this is about black people. I cannot put a garment on someone that is not black because that would just contradict the entire meaning of the collection. Um, some can wear anything, but others are quite particular. So you need to be definitely aware of that. After the research, I start sketching and I start just drawing either random shapes or sometimes I draw without a body. Sometimes I use a body. It just depends on how my mindset is that day, because sometimes I do need to see it on a form and other times I don't. And then after I have an idea of what I'm going for, then I go look for fabric. A lot of other designers that I've met, they like to look for fabric first and then make something. I can do that at times if I'm just trying to be fun and on a whim, but when a collection has a really deep meaning, I need to sketch out things first and then go fabric shopping. And I don't actually buy things yet. I get swatches of so many fabrics, as you can see behind me. I'm quite particular when I choose my fabric because even that can add to the meaning. Um, and it can add different things that you may not even be aware of. For example, another collection I worked on for my last semester was dealing with the effects of racism mentally and most specifically on myself. And I did not want to use cotton <laughs> just because I felt as though it was too on the nose for what I wanted to do. Um, so I think being aware of fabric content and what your fabric's history is, is, is extremely important. Um, silk also has an extremely dense history when you look at how silkworms have been used, how it has like, impacted cultures, how it has impacted economies. Um, color purple was an extremely difficult color to make and a very expensive color. That's why it was worn by royalty. When I go into my shoot process, I will really think about background colors, set design if it's necessary, if we should do something outside, how will that affect the meaning, and how will that affect the mood of the photo, and um, just really thinking about the finished product because I feel like 
you can really tell your story a certain way if you shoot it correctly. And that is honestly what photography is. You're showing someone part of the story. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad because you can really make things look differently with a camera, whether you're cutting off and cropping and zooming in so that no one else sees the outside or so that you're just getting a picture in like a certain timing where something looks differently. So while I am a third year student and making my way out of college, I do take commissions. And if you would like to support me in other ways, I do have a GoFundMe as well to support my color theory collection and the making of it. As like I mentioned, fabric can get quite expensive. Um, if you would like to keep up with me, my Instagram is Naomi Hoken and my website is Naomi.co. It was really lovely talking to you all. I hope you have a great day.